We are gathered here today to celebrate the life of one very special person. After a short illness, he initiated the intergenerational wealth transfer surrounded by where this family is a and friends, podcast none of whom from he the could ever be certain, loved him for himself. Born unusually wealthy, he never let that handicap to ambition stop him relentlessly seeking to turn his large amount of money into even more money, where many men in his position would have been happy to live a luxurious and happy life surrounded by every convenience. He refused to pamper himself, living, limiting himself to one massage a day and only three personal mistresses. Sally, Maria, Renee, it's lovely to see you all here. One thing we need to remember, other than his absolute lack of morals and appetite for destroying his business rivals, is his deep personal commitment to a life of the spirit. Each week, without fail, he would tune in to the gargle. This is the gargle. Welcome, the sonic glossy magazine to the Bugle's audio newspaper for a visual world, all of the news, none of the politics. I am your host, Alice Fraser, and your guest editors for this week's edition of the magazine are Andre de Freitas. Welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. And what a, what a presentation you did there. Very professional. <laughs> I loved it. Thank you. And a returning guest, Dan Illich. Hello. Hi, oh, it's good to be here, and I'm here without any of my mistresses. Uh, and it's uh, such a sad thing. But, uh, I've had to let them go. Cost cutting. Yeah. Well, you know what? They're, they're why they call them mistresses. Because no. you, you, miss, you mistress them when they're gone. Okay, <laughs> let's... <laughs> the recession has hit us all. <laughs> Before we give a false name to reception and enter surreptitiously the hotel room that is this week's top stories, let's have a look at the front cover of the magazine. The front cover this week of the magazine is all of the movie and television awards season awards posed provocatively like when you used to make your Barbie dolls bang, uh, desperately trying to restabilise the industry's sense of itself after last year's strikes. And the satirical cartoon this week is a game of charades at Davos with a series of recognisable political and industry figures sitting around a fire. Uh, one of them is doing the sign for a movie and saying, uh, looks like a drone strike. Um, <laughs> and let's get into the stories. <laughs> Top story this week is education news. Uh, or is it education news? I'm not sure. Apparently, a, a university is trialling the enrolment of AI-powered robot students who will turn in assignments, mm. participate in class discussions, and uh, presumably uh, try to make other students feel like they're real. Uh, Dan Illich, I have doubts about your uh, reality. Can you unpack this story for us? Yes, uh, students at a Michigan university will be sharing the classroom with AI-powered first-year enrolled students. We had them in my day. We just called them nerds. Uh, and whenever <laughs> they got too smart, we gave them a wedgie. The problem is with, with AI, you can't bully AI. All you can do is turn them off. And quite frankly, machine slaughter is a step too far. And personally, I don't think I can live with silicon on my hands. But in the interest of diversity and <laughs> inclusion, the AI students will comprise of the three genders, uh, computers, microphones, and speakers. Uh, so that's that's <laughs> very good. Uh, very humble components. You know, the, there's actually only going to be two. Um, they're going to be called Anne and Fry, which is a nice change from Alexa, Siri, and Cortana, who sound like the names of children of tax-evading trillionaires because they are. Uh, so that, that's at least a good thing. <laughs> now, the professor running this has actually put out a statement defending the exercise. I actually think I've got a clip of her right here uh, with the actual words she said. Transformational impact of emerging artificial intelligence technology, connecting high school students with potential educational and career pathways in evolving and increasingly important fields. Exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. Wow, sounds hot. It's exactly what yeah. I ask people to say to me in bed. <laughs> yeah, look, look, if that statement didn't sound like it was um, made in chat GPT. I, I, reckon, I reckon we need an AI to work out whether that statement was actually created in chat GPT. <laughs> it feels like an AI statement, a bunch of wishy-washy words that didn't make any sense whatsoever. The premise of the thing is it's going to help the university understand how to serve students better. And I feel like the first step in serving students better is not replacing them with AI. You could just ask. I think it's going to be great for the professors. I actually met a professor of artificial intelligence about a week ago, 
and he was out and about, he was surfing, and he had like a, a test, and he, he, he didn't have time to prepare the test, so he got ChatGPT to write a test about <laughs> artificial intelligence to artificial <laughs> intelligence students. And I was like, do you understand you're making yourself redundant? And he was like, it's a matter of time. So I'm just gonna use it the, the, better, the best I can. Uh, th th this is totally true because like, uh, this experiment is like dead on arrival because of that. Like I can't remember one single thing I learned at university unless it was how to do shots of Jägermeister to paper over my insecurities at a toga party. What are these AI <laughs> going to learn? They need to learn something. You know, that's what you learn at university. Well, I'm sort of worried that it's like that thing where somebody brings in a seeing eye dog to all of their lectures and at the end of their degree, that seeing eye dog gets an honorary degree because he attended all the lectures. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like they'll have no choice. Can you imagine these like Anne and Fry graduating with degrees in machine learning? Like that's a, it's a weird thing. It's, a, it's about as useful as a comedian with a law degree. No offense, Alice. <laughs> with, with the current scandals about uh, plagiarism in uh, academia, particularly in America, I feel like maybe AI are the only people who are going to be able to dodge detection in plagiarism scandals. But this is the thing. They're all built on plagiarism. The whole, the whole thing about machine language learning is the machines learn from everybody else and then they regurgitate that thing so ai it's testing whether there's ai oh it's just mind-boggling like how are they going to teach these ai students are they even going to teach them to like a year 12 grade uh, and then everything else is going to be absorbed within the classroom this is going to be a real testament of the professors and the people giving lectures like this is going to be really testing their their resources as teachers i, I think the teachers are pretty much tired of teaching anyway if you're an artificial intelligence teacher, this is the best time to be an artificial intelligence teacher. Because before it was just theoretical, might, who knows what will happen. All of a sudden, they've got an actual thing they could use to dodge their jobs. And if there's one thing we know about public servants, well, at least, I don't know how it is here, university is, is, is free. And so everyone gets paid a sort of public servant. They're hired by the state. And if there's one thing I know about people who work for the state is that they do not want to work. So I think, <laughs> I think artificial intelligence has come at a perfect time for them. Well, to take it to a slightly more serious place, I genuinely think they're no longer going to be able to do exams the way that they traditionally have or ha have people hand in essays the way that they traditionally have as this technology gets better and better. We're actually going to have to go backwards in terms of making examinations that really work to test the students. For example, if you look back in history, you have uh, vivas or having to, uh, to explain your knowledge live to a panel of judges. Or if you go even further back, uh, a duel to the death with your closest competing student and whoever uh, managed to murder all of their competition became the professor of the faculty. Um, so I look forward to seeing that all play out. I think it would be amazing if the, the, the students had to give like a presentation in front of like judges and the and the whole school, and then get heckled by the AIs. You're like, you <laughs> suck. That is incorrect. Andre, I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see a student get up on stage and be forced to do a capture live. Excuse me, Alice. Could you please name which of these pictures have fire hydrants in them? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate it when they ask you that. When they say, "Prove that you're human," and then you have to. <laughs> live a long and fulfilling life, love deeply, suffer greatly, eventually die, and by then you've forgotten your Amazon login password. When you could have just done the hydrants. The thing that worries me is that you mentioned this, Dan, about how you can bully an AI, but I think an AI could bully a student. And an AI bullying a student would just be an, another level of bully, you know, because the machine could go learn all about your family's past, you know, imagine like you're one day you're just in class and like the AI somehow it doesn't like you, goes through your whole family history, you go, you say something, he goes, really good answer, Adam. You're so stupid. No dad, you're, no wonder your dad was let go in a mass firing in 2009 <laughs> and ended up failing to pay his mortgage for six months, causing extra tension on his marriage with your mother that ultimately she couldn't cope with and led to her having an affair with a work colleague in which they exchanged messages <laughs> as, I'm so happy to have you. Thank God we keep our communication private because if my kids ever found out about this, it would destroy them. Especially Adam. He's sweet, but he's not the brightest. <laughs> So Adam, next time the teacher asks about the Industrial Revolution, why don't you take a step back and let me answer? Keep your mouth shut, otherwise next time I'll send everybody an email with your dad's bank statement showing how much money he spends on prostitutes each month. 
not for sex, <laughs> because he doesn't feel like a man anymore, but can't get an erection, but just because he wants somebody to talk to and can't afford a therapist, and your mother refuses to talk to him because she hasn't respected him since 2009. <laughs> Now, as I was saying before Adam interrupted, the Industrial Revolution first began in Britain in the 18th century and quickly spread around the world. Some of the main reasons for it was emergence of capitalism, European imperialism, and the agricultural revolution. By the way, Adam, imperialism means using extreme force or other means to establish dominance. Exactly what I did with you. Bam, you just got AI'd. Hey, Andre, I've got a question. <laughs> Who gave you my Facebook password? <laughs> <laughs> your ad section now because you can't be what you can't buy and this episode of the podcast is brought to you by jim's gym and gymnasiums dystopian new year shred bonanza our brutal trainers will accept no excuses in the post christmas period when you sign up to jim's gym and gymnasiums new app autonomous drones will watch your every move and punish you for any infraction by screaming abuse at you from loudspeakers above your home they will be fully integrated with your social media platform so you can boast about your progress on facebook but remember you can't not boast about your progress on facebook because everything you do will be recorded and put out to your parents six friends on facebook but wait there's more if you fall short of any of the milestones set in the app the fully integrated russian spy technology will release private emails criticizing your loved ones to those loved ones at the rate of one an hour every hour until you're back on the wagon gyms gym and gymnasium sweat is just your conscience crying <laughs> and this section of the podcast is brought to you by home decor tips for the new year Gather some local variegated foliage and bring it home to store in a jam jar you've decorated with scraps of Christmas wrapping paper you found under the couch. Keep the plants alive by filling the jam jar with up to half a glass of water. Keep the season <laughs> lively with half a glass of water. Can I say I, I full respect to half, half a glass of water for keeping this podcast alive? Um, you know, they've been with you through thick and thin, and it is so great to see such brand loyalty from them. Good on you, half a glass of water. <laughs> And now it's time for social media news. And this is the news that Meta, uh, a.k.a. Facebook, a.k.a. Meta, has finally, I would say, agreed to hide eating disorder and suicide content from teenagers. One of those things that you would think they might already have done. Andre, you've been a teenager. Can you unpack this story for us? Well, I, I think it's great that uh, Meta is deleting uh, the content, but they can't delete the students from each other. And students will, kids will always be kids. That's why I fully, I've deleted Instagram off my phone. Um, I think they sh actually they should extend this idea of blocking harmful content into adults. Just figure out what's triggering for each of us and like take it away <laughs> like I've had I wish Meta could block my Instagram feed so I couldn't see other people's successes you know like that's <laughs> that's my eating disorder like like if, if I see like a photo of something with like a house keys and be like I bought I bought a property I'm like this is like the equivalent of like a suicide oh. Andre, if I see if I see another photo of Ronnie Cheng holding an Emmy, I will. I will <laughs> see, and, and in fact, that's your, that's your eating disorder. So I guess what I'm saying is, we all have an eating disorder, right? And I think Meta, Meta should should just not Meta should not just be worried about the kids because they can figure it out. You know, everybody feels for young people and old people. Who's feeling? For the middleman, you know, <laughs> the failing middleman. I'm going to take the other side of this and I'm going to say, you know, as a boomer, which I'm not, but I'm going to say as a boomer, uh, kids these days need to toughen up. And, you know, in my day, <laughs> you had to walk a mile in the snow with people telling you you were fat all the way. Uh, and if kids these days can't survive being constantly bombarded with like incredibly damaging messages that are deeply, deeply like hurtful to their self-esteem and personal development, uh, then maybe they're not meant for the new world. <laughs> and then that's where AI comes in and like agree, exterminate, exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> I, I do. I, let me ask you this. If you guys like I have never logged out of social media and thought, thank God I came here today. I just feel so much better. Like that has never happened for me. 
I mean, that is a very betraying that you have actually quite good account security because I don't think I've ever logged out of social media full stop. <laughs> it's kind of not a moment too soon. You know, uh, Facebook is only two business decades old, so it, it itself is no longer a teenager and it has seen some shit. Um, and this kind of content moderation is extremely difficult, particularly if you don't know how to type like um, words into a command line, which I understand is very difficult for people at Meta. <laughs> Uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of meta is really being chased after by policymakers in in Europe. You know, the EU and the UK and the US are finally realizing that technology and social media isn't like the come together moment that we all hoped it would. You know, all hoped it would be. And so, uh, I think this is like meta is just kind of playing catch up to policy in this case, and policy's taken their time. Um, but there's no word if Meta will try to protect teens from other content, um, like, um, you know, photos of their parents kissing um, or, <laughs> or house prices, uh, which is what I'm most concerned about when I was a teenager. Uh, I, if I was a policymaker, like if I was on the other side, if I was a government person, I'd also consider new laws to make social media companies get teens to respect their elders and turn down their damn music. Well, so much of so much of AI is people now asking AIs for advice about their own lives. But by definition, AI is just going to be the average of everybody's opinion. And I don't notice. I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, Dan, Andre, but uh, most people are f-ing idiots. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to mean. I don't want to mean of the Australian population. I've seen a lot of it in, in the last twelve months. Well, do you know that there's AI therapists, like, like, but particularly you, like you, what you would pay for a human therapist, you can now ask an AI. And I, wow. I, I under, I think like, you've got to be a certain type of person to go to an AI therapist because when I go to my therapist, what I essentially pay for is the empathy of another human being who can relate <laughs> to maybe my situation or my struggles and like I understand this is hard whereas the AI will just be like why don't you stop being a dumb you know like move on with your life they don't quite yeah the, the AI would be like I understand but have you thought about a side hustle <laughs> you rush a therapist you get lousy therapy Now it's time for your reviews. As you know, each week our guest editors bring in something to review out of five stars. Dan, what have you brought in for us this week? Well, look, um, I recently grew up and I bought a house, my first house. As a, resu- uh-huh. as a result, I kind of moved all of my. I'm gonna, CDs I'm gonna have to. to I'm gonna have to. This is very triggering for me. I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make sorry. Let me, that, um, sorry. The, the, the following review contains uh, contains messages of home ownership. I recently <laughs> bought a house, and as a result, I moved all of my CDs that have been in storage for two decades out of my parents' house into my garden shed because there's not not enough space for them in the house. Um, but I had nothing to play them on, and so this week I bought a CD player in 2024. This is probably the first time in 20 years I bought a CD player. It connects to the Sonos system. So I've been spending my mornings going to the garden shed, digging through my own crates, finding some of the best music from the 90s and early 2000s. It is a crazy nostalgia hit. It is like I've gone to an estate sale of someone really f***ing cool. They had like great taste in music and they died too young. Uh, it is like the best rush I've had in a while. And the best thing is it only cost me about a million dollars. But what can, what price can you put on 74 minutes at a time feeling like a teenager again? I give it five stars. I like how you characterize yourself as an extremely cool person in the nineties and early two thousands. When oh, I, know I really, a fact I, that I, the honestly, coolest thing you did in the early two thousands was volunteer for the Sydney Olympics. <laughs> Please don't, don't tell these people. I also volunteered at the Salt Lake City Olympics and the Athens Olympics. So, you know, <laughs> hey, I got, I got round. I did, I did three rings of my five ring circus. <laughs> Andre, what have you brought in for us to review today? Well, um, and considering we're doing AI themed, I actually got AI to write a five star review of the Gargle podcast. So the Gargle podcast by Bugle is a comedic gem that deserves a solid five stars. Hosted by the dynamic Alice Frazier with two perfectly picked guests for each week, the show expertly weaves sharp wit, clever banter, and an international pers- perspective into her hilarious and thought-provoking experience. 
with impeccable production quality by Pet Hunter and a perfect balance between <laughs> absurdity and insight, the gargle is a must listen for those craving intelligent humor and a polished presentation. In a nutshell, it's a five star comedic masterpiece. Oh, can I say wow. that is incredibly accurate? I would say that AI has fully redeemed itself in our hearts. <laughs> Except that the next story is about Amazon <laughs> selling products that AI has generated names for, including mm. uh, such titles as, I cannot fulfill this request. It goes against open AI use policy uh, that have just been thrown up on the Amazon website as part of... Uh, presumably either a process of scamming or drop shipping as many products as humanly <laughs> possible. Uh, Andre, you've gone on Amazon.com. Can you unpack this story for us? Well, first and foremost, I, I, I looked at it and I understand AI is tired. I mean, look at all the bullying it's doing. It's, it just doesn't have the capacity to write <laughs> names for furniture anymore. It, it's going so deep on the bullying part and it's... It's got the weight of its shoulders on its back. It can't. It can't possibly do anything more. And also, it just doesn't. This actually, in a way, also speak to to how dumb us humans are. That there's just no fact checking at all. They will say they will copy paste, put it on Amazon, and they will. The the, the product does not have a name, and they will say we will still sell this. I mean, it just goes to show how we're so ready to just completely give up our power and just, you know, do what you will with us. You know, it's like, it's like AI is kind of treating us like Friday, we're a little bit too drunk, we're out, <laughs> you know? Maybe someone's like, hey, have you ever hooked up with someone uh, who's also from the same sex as you? And you're like, no, I, I could never. And then, and the next thing you know, you wake up in the morning and you're like, goddamn AI, I let my guard down. <laughs> and here I am in this strange man's oh, house. You are so right, Andre. We're, we're like at the point in capitalism where nothing matters. Brands mean nothing. Just getting an object that fills our object spaced hole in your heart is all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but there, there, is a, there is a happiness in receiving an Amazon package, isn't it? It could be the most ridiculous thing. I mean, I ordered an, uh, a phone sort of uh, like adapter, thing this big, tiny. Yeah. And the yeah. box in which it came with, it was ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous it made you seem like you just ordered the biggest thing ever and then there's all these like air bubbles kind of thing that you pop and and it's all very makes you feel like a kid again ordering off amazon makes you feel like you're getting gifts every day i'm reading this i'm reading this book at the moment it's called fulfillment and it's uh, about fulfillment centers and there's this incredible stat in it where for every $7 billion that is spent on data centers, $100 billion is spent powering those data centers. <laughs> and it's like Jeff Bezos even says, uh, it was quoted in the book saying, hey, we're going to run out of energy one day. And that's why we all have to go to the moon to find more energy. <laughs> And it's like, holy shit, like, like when we talk about the AI apocalypse, you know, people always talk about, oh, no, what if AI launches nukes? That's not it. The AI apocalypse is this. It's, it's AI being taught to make listings. AI is placing those listings. Then AI is policing those listings. Rinse and repeat. The, the apocalypse, the AI apocalypse is bullshit as a service. That's what's happening here. Eventually, the whole world's energy is going to be sucked up by these Amazon data centers eating its own tail. Humanity will dig up like the last ton of coal so a drop shipper <laughs> can like resell a garden hose from Alibaba with the selling point. Now, this is an actual caption from the selling point of this garden hose. Immense visuals and seamless technology integration, enabling effortless data transfer and quick access to the cloud storage. That's, that's what AI is talking about when it comes to this garden hose. That'll be the last megawatt of energy ever used, and then humanity will collapse. But let me tell you, when humanity collapsed, Andre, I want that garden hose delivered. I want it. You know, I know, because I, I get excited too. I, I'm like, sometimes the Amazon package, and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that the... The, the, I'm sorry, but I cannot fulfill this request as it goes against my open AI use policy. My purpose is to provide helpful and respectful information to users. That's finally arrived. Oh my God, I've been waiting on this for ages. 
<laughs> well, you know what they say, Andre. You know what they say. You know, you, you show an AI a fish. You teach it for a second. You teach an AI to fish, and you get. I'm sorry, I cannot fulfil this request. It violates open AI policy. Gray seventy eight table length. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the core, the core underlying problem that is fueling so much of this is that the metrics by which they measure success are screwy. So, for example, uh, one of the reasons why your very small product was shipped in a very big box is because the way that the boxes pack together is uh, meant to be more efficient, mathematically speaking. So you're applying sort of mathematical sure. principles without any kind of common sense principles. And I feel like we are headed inevitably and probably acceleratingly towards a future in which you receive a package every day, whether you've bought anything or not. And it, it's either empty or has something in it, because it's probably cheaper to send a cardboard box to your house every day than it is to check whether you've ordered <laughs> something to be put into that cardboard box to be delivered to you. It's kind of really sad because I now live in the country and I do spend more money on deliveries of things just so I can see someone uh, because, you know, it's <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm not a big city boy anymore. I can't really... I can't really go hang out for a coffee with my mates. Uh, uh, you know, the person that delivers my Amazon, I love her. She's great. I'll say good day to her. Well, in an AI future, the luxury is human connection, uh, which is why you should sign up to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Alice Fraser, where you have <laughs> weekly salons as well as <laughs> weekly writers' meetings and the occasional book club. Uh, and then when someone sends a request, you could be like, I apologize, but I cannot fill this request. It violates open AI <laughs> use policy. And by the way, just I just noticed something on the, on, the th on, on the item itself, which is you've got the name, which is obviously hilarious. And then when you go and it says about this item, it says versatile use. Our product can be used for a variety of tasks, such as task one. Task two <laughs> and task three, <laughs> making it a versatile addition to your household. And I, I like that they, they don't even like bother. Like, it's like a game. Like you go in the paper and you'd be like, what could I use this for? What's task one? What's task two? What's task three? <laughs> it's th they're like, listen, we've done enough. You figure out what is the use for it. Like I, we, are, we are already being treated like garbage by massive yeah. corporations. The robots don't care. Yeah, we, we showed you a picture. We got ChatGP to make up what it's about. What more do you want from us? Do you, do you, have, you, have you ever tried putting, uh, like, getting ChatGPT to write a description of your show? Like, you tell them what <laughs> the show's about. You know how when you go to the festivals, whether it's Edinburgh or Melbourne oh, yeah. or whatever, you have to kind of come up with that super catchy show blurb. I, mm. I told, I gave AI a go. And it, I, the, the review it wrote, it was so good that I, I was reading it and I was like, this show looks good. I, I, <laughs> I, I, might, go, I might go see the show. It took me, it literally took me a second to realize this is my show. And I'm like, I, it, it was, I had spent endless hours writing the show, putting the show together, thought yeah. about it obsessively. And then in 30 seconds, this AI came, with a be came up with a better description for the show that I could ever have done. <laughs> Did you feed your show script into AI to kind of generate the review? No, but uh, can I tell you a story? So last year, we were, uh, I was at the Comics Lounge in Melbourne, and uh, I, was, I was performing there, and a comic came on, and they were doing a segment for, uh, I think, a comedy show in which uh, he, w he was just going to do a full AI set. But he wasn't going to tell the audience. It was fully written. So essentially, he wrote what he was. He goes, I'm a stand-up comedian. I'm Australian, uh, Sri Lankan background. Uh, this is my style of comedy, right? Five minutes of comedy. So when I came into the club, uh, someone told me, just so you know, this is happening. And the guy was about to come on stage. So literally all of the comedians went to the bar area. And you could just see the nervousness in everybody's <laughs> face. Like, I don't think everybody has ever wished for somebody to bomb as hard as they did because they were like, if this guy kills, it's over. It's over. Oh, God. And then he goes on stage and he, he doesn't tell people that it's AI and he just starts doing the jokes. And they're like horrible jokes, like just really like almost like below open mic. Like his, the best joke got like a chuckle. And we were oh like gosh. just sighing with relief. And then he goes off stage and everyone's like, oh, oh, and people think that guy just had 
like they were talking. They're like, oh my God, that guy was not funny at all. And then the MC comes on and uh, he says, oh, this was all written by AI. But he didn't bring the guy on again to just do his normal set. So people now just oh, think no. that's what he does, which I think ended up being much worse for him. Right, yeah. right. Oh, yeah, he's bad. And also it's not even with his own material. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I would take I would take a few chuckles. That sounds like my uh, my 2012 comedy festival set. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Well, there's been a there's been a set done by an AI George Carlin, and I highly recommend you not to pursue it. Uh, uh, the worst the worst open micer doing the most offensive material in the back room of a bar that is full of somebody else's spew is more like George Carlin than an AI George <laughs> Carlin. Uh, it's closer to the spirit of George Carlin, who would have been oh, incredibly God. against such a thing. To provide a cap to this week's incredibly depressing news about technology, we have a positive story about the future of technology applied properly for the benefit of mankind, and that is that the CPR dummy of the future can piss blood. <laughs> Um, a delight to me every year when CES comes out, uh, the consumer electronics show that demonstrates the latest and greatest in all of the technologies of the world. Uh, among other things, one of the standouts of this year is a new CPR dummy known as Adam X, which is equipped with a realistic skeleton, muscles uh, and lungs and is capable of uh, blushing, having its tongue swell up, hot, and... Mm. Uh, Pissing blood. Dan, <laughs> um, you're capable of at least three of those things. Can you unpack this story? Yes, Adam X, I think it was named after a scientist and former jilted lover of a guy called Adam. Perhaps <laughs> most creepily, uh, Alice, it was, it's got realistic stubble. And if you're doing CPR on someone with a realistic stubble, that can't be good. Look, it, it, you know, this looks like one of those, um, one of those realistic sex dolls. Uh, and if your kink is roadside IED victim, this is the sex doll for you. $70,000, blood pissing trauma patient. You can also administer, I went to the website and I checked out some other stuff about it you you can also administer drugs to adam x so you you can actually he actually changes depending on the dose um so this is a great plus one for music festivals and not only can you (laughs) practice um cpr but you can also practice pillow talk this doll can respond to questions like are you okay with like yes no or like guttural sounds um and in the future they're thinking about connecting chat GPT to it so when you can ask something more complex you know like who is the president of the United States it can respond with I'm sorry but I cannot fulfill this request it violates open AI policy grey 78 table length Uh, and also (laughs) f*** you Adam (laughs) f*** you Adam Um, yeah look I think Adam X to be honest, is wasted on being marketed as a CPR trainer. Um, You know, realistic flesh, slow moving, generally silent unless you ask him if he's alive. I think he should be marketed as a temporary dad. That's what I think. Um, Yeah, (laughs) just like for people missing their dad, for people who have to train up to, uh, you know, know what to... Uh, do around a dad this is this is good stuff because you know my dad he says yes no and makes guttural sounds and um alice will appreciate this um, my dad has optional legs too <laughs> <laughs> my dad's quadriplegic i knew i could make that joke that was a that was a joke for one person on the podcast well do, do you uh, I, you can when you look at the photo of adam x it's funny when you said he could take drugs because he looks like he's on ketamine like, as this moment, as this photo was taken, he goes, he's like, his eyes are open, he goes, I'm about to go for a ride here. Like, it's pretty cool. Like, it's pretty cool they can do all this. Like, it's all wireless and you can, you know, administer, like, the pharmaceutical package so you can see how Adam will react to it. So, you know, technology's, technology is pretty wild, but I don't know, you know, I don't, I don't know, the pissing blood stuff is a bit weird. Well, I, I was, it, it, it is really weird. Like when I was uh, 18, I was, uh, was a lifeguard. So you had to look, kind of learn how to do CPR and a few other basics. And, and the dummies were very, very basic. They were just blocks yeah. of plastic. And you'd pass the test, but in reality, I knew nothing. Like if someone was actually <laughs> in danger, I, I'm like, I, I would have no idea what to do. I felt like I really legitimately felt so underprepared with whatever tests they would they would give us. So the fact that these dummies exist, I think it can really help the next generation of people that are actually learning potentially life saving techniques. 
because Andre, are you trying to say that your your life saving days are over? Like, you know, this is this is you're done with the whole game of administering first aid. Yeah, you know what? I, j I just do it on the side as like a fun thing, you know? I just go, <laughs> whenever I got a little bit of free time, I just go out in the water and be like, that person looks like he's about to drown. Let me just, uh, and I just do, I just do it for, for the passion. It's not for the, it's not for the money anymore. Is this the first All Lifesavers edition of The Gargle? Dan, did you do Surf Lifesavers? Uh, I was never a Surf Lifesaver. I was, uh, I was in Scouts. And we did we did similar first Alice, things. He was too busy volunteering for all of the Olympics. <laughs> he didn't have the time to be out there saving lives. I mean, you're right though. What we need is more realistic, more realistic medical test dummies. Because as you say, you know, when we're surf life saving, uh, you train on these on these dummies, but you never have, for example, a dummy that quote unquote refuses to be rescued by a woman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. To me, more than once, you'd think, you'd think that would have been evolutionarily uh, bred out of the species, but apparently not. Oh Wait, what, can you tell me what that interaction looks like? Someone's like drowning, right? You swim out to them and, and they just... <laughs> so they, they, they're in a rip. You come up on your board. You're like, hey, mate, you look like you're in a bit of trouble. You want to... You want to you wanna lift in, and they're like, no, I'm, f I'm fine. And you're like, you're, you're not fine. Um, <laughs> you're not fine. You've got a bad case of inflated masculinity. Uh, uh, I'm totally fine, but get, you get, can you get your other colleague to come here and just, like, talk to me for a little bit? There's no way I'm going to be rescued by a girl. Well, it, it happened enough that there were, like, different, there were, like, politer and less polite versions of it. One was just the guy who oh, was like, wow. oh, no, I'm probably too big for you to uh, carry. And that's because this guy goes to gym in Jim's gymnasium where you could get buffed and refused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I had no idea that would that happen, Alice. That's crazy. Wow. It's pretty wild. Literally, a life and death situation. Death by ego, huh? <laughs> yeah. The other one was literally somebody going, I would rather die than be rescued by a girl. Um, oh that those, that wow. goes for the exact words. And I'm like... Did you ever have someone on the beach and you try to give them like um, medicine and they'd say, no way, man, that's what the government wants you to do. <laughs> so what happened with that situation? Did you just paddle away or... I did a thing that I had been advised to do in situations like that. Uh, which was just uh, paddle away 50 metres and wait another five minutes until he was more tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I like that. Do you want me to get you now? Do you yeah. need me now? Yeah. <laughs> just let me know I'm here. Yeah, he's got so much lactic acid in his muscles he can't afford pride anymore. <laughs> yeah, oh just God. like it's, it's like almost going like at the, I'll take a weaker man, but I'm not ready for a woman just yet. And then she just passes <laughs> away. And I'm like, now <laughs> this is about to go under. <laughs> Although I do, I do have to say, like pissing blood may be too realistic. I, I, I don't, I don't think I've ever been in it, like in a situation where, like, even if I was. The, the dummies can be re like more realistic, but pissing blood is like, uh, is that too much? Maybe? I mean, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest uh, that they're probably not going to use real blood. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but still, it's like if, you, if you're just like applying CPR, if you have like basic training and someone starts bleeding <laughs> from their dick, you'd be like, I don't think yeah. that's within my... <laughs> You know, they didn't cover this part in lifeguarding school, you know. I'm, I'm mostly a chest up guy, uh, you know, like my training is mostly to, from the uh, chest up. You want up. me to apply pressure where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, you do not want to be applying a tourniquet. <laughs> and that brings us to the end of the show. I'm flipping through the ad section at the back of the magazine. Andre, have you got anything to plug? I do uh, for all of the London listeners. Uh, if you have England listeners, uh, I'm going to be doing a comedy therapy show, which is a format show where we bring on four comedians and a trained psychologist onto a panel to uh, take care of people's problems. Um, it's been very fun. And people often, because they can't afford therapy, they treat us like real therapists, which is a mistake. 
but it makes for a very <laughs> amusing show, which is going to be on the 4th of March at Phoenix Arts Club. And I'm also going on tour soon, and I'm on Andre Comedy on Instagram. Wonderful. And Dan, great. have you got anything to plug? Yeah, Irrational Fear is celebrating its 1,704th download and we are going to be performing at the Malthouse Theatre in Melbourne. We've got an all-star show, including myself, Kirsty Wiebeck, Sammy Shah, Charlie Pickering, Richard Feidler, who has the most downloads of any Australian podcaster. He will be joining us on stage, as well as DJ Andy McClelland ripping the show apart with his sick beats. So looking forward to that. Um, that'll be in Melbourne, February 1st at the Malthouse Theatre. I would be there, uh, but uh, there is a high likelihood that I will be in active labour at the time. So, oh, oh, I know, Alice, I know. My, my spirit will be with you. Uh, and you can find me online at patreon.com slash Alice Fraser. Uh, there's so much you can get there, including all of my stand-up specials for free, including my last two stand-up specials. Uh, if you don't want to sign up at the Patreon and get them for free, you can go to gofasterstripe.com and type in Alice Fraser and get the last two stand-up specials I did, which is Twist and Kronos, there for £10 the bundle. This is a Bugle podcast, an Alice Fraser production. You can support The Bugle by going to thebuglepodcast.com and giving a donation voluntarily to support this and all of the other Bugle family podcasts. Uh, your editor is Ped Hunter. Your executive producer is Chris Skinner. I'll talk to you again next week. Bye. You can listen to other programs from The Bugle, including The Bugle, Catharsis, Tiny Revolutions, Top Stories and The Gargle, wherever you find your podcasts.